So special angle relationships, we're going to start with a straight angle. It's going to look a lot like a straight line. So if this is my vertex, and I go in that direction, I don't want to move it because now I need to also go in the other direction. So if I call this vertex V, um, let's make it angle, straight angle. TVX. Now, you might think that the T has to be on the left and the X on the right, and it can be. It does not have to be. So just to show you that it doesn't have to be, I'm going to put my X over here and my T over here. But V does have to be in the middle. So it's a straight angle because it equals 180 degrees exactly. Now for this video you're going to need, or for this assignment, you're going to need a protractor. There are a couple kinds of protractors. This is the most common kind. That's gigantic. I would say get one smaller than that if you can. You can get these, they're kind of four inch ones, like that other one was a six inch one. And this is nice hard plastic. What I like to do, or what I've done, is I downloaded an image off of Google Images, put it on, copy and pasted it into a Word document, and then printed it off. Now you can just print it on regular paper and then cut it out, or I was able to print it onto transparency paper. And so I like it. I like this one because it's really flimsy. I mean, it's really bendable. It's not going to break. I can slide it right in my book, use that as a bookmark. And also, it's really small, and a lot of the work that I do is in small areas. So this big one, it's hard to use the big one in small areas. So you're going to see me using this one. But any protractor you have is fine. We're going to draw another dot below this line. We're going to call it W. And go from V through W. And we're going to measure each side of that, each angle. Do you see that there are now two angles? There's this acute angle and there's this obtuse angle. So since it's below it, we put this mark right here at the vertex, right where this ray, ray VW, takes off from the straight angle. And then make sure that this side, this arrow goes through zero, and on the other side, nope, so I need to move it just a little bit that way. So now that they go through zero on both sides, notice that there's a zero here and a 180 there. Over here, the 180 is on the bottom and the zero is on the top. That's so that you can measure it from either way. And that makes it really easy now to measure the acute angle. So starting on the bottom, because that's where the zero is, 0, 10, 20, 30, 45, maybe 46. And on the other side, I use the top or the outside numbers, 0, 10, 20, 30, clear up through 130, 135. So usually I label them in here, 135 degrees and 45 degrees. Now the question is, if I add up 45 and 135, does that equal 180? And it better, otherwise I've done a wrong calculation. And the answer is yes, it does. So 45 plus 135 equals 180. These are called supplementary angles. And this is one of your vocabulary terms. Exactly two angles that have a sum of 180 degrees. Not three angles, because sometimes people go, well, there are like four angles there. If you add them all up, it equals 180. No, our definition of supplementary angles is two angles that have a sum of 180 degrees. Now, another term is adjacent, A-D-J-A, -A, adjacent angles. Now, adjacent angles share a vertex and a ray. So notice that these are also adjacent angles. Angle XVW is adjacent to TVW because they share this vertex V and this ray, VW. Now, when you are supplementary, you add up to 180. Well, when you have two angles that are supplementary, 
and adjacent, it has a special name. That is called a linear pair. Two angles that are supplementary and, not or, it has to be both, and adjacent. So as long as they share a vertex and a ray and add up to 180 degrees, that is called a linear pair. Now, I'm going to give you a little challenge here. I want you to draw two angles. One of them is, um, let's go with 65 degrees, and they have to be supplementary and not touching. Supplementary, not adjacent. Pause the video and draw it, and then see if yours matches mine. Okay, or you can just watch. I'm going to start by drawing my 65 going in that direction. Now, they can both be going the same direction if you want to. But here's my vertex for my 65 degree one. Take my compass. I put this the uh, vertex on where the bottom line meets the vertical line. And then make sure that this line goes through zero. And then I go up 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 65, and I put a dot right there where 65 is. Actually, I might just hold my pencil there. And line it up with the other with the vertex and draw it. And then I need to label it 65 degrees. Now I'm going to come over here and I'm going to move it away from it. In fact, I'm going to have it go the same direction. So it's going to go in that direction right here. Now I need, well, what's, what's left over when I do 180 minus 65? I borrow from the 8, make that a 7, so 115. So, again, I line up the vertical horizontal and make sure that this ray goes through 0. Here's 90, 100, 110, 115 is right there. So I move that out of the way. that up with my vertex and I draw my line and I label that 115 degrees and now I have supplementary angles that are not adjacent and this would be under the directions of draw remember how we went over the definition of sketch draw and construct well we're not constructing because we're using tools of measurement and tools of measurement allow us to draw now I want you to draw a 90 degree angle. So I'm going to start with a horizontal line. And I know a lot of you are going to want to cheat and just draw a vertical line. You say, oh, that's 90 degrees. And you might even, it might even be 90 degrees, but you still didn't measure it. When we draw it, we use tools of measure. So I'm going to put my vertex right there so it's easy for me to line up. And of course, this ray goes through zero. 90 is right there. Oh, I have a little break in my desk. And the way that we show, either you label it with the number 90 degrees or you use the mark of the square, which is where you draw a little square here. And that is the symbol that means 90 degrees. Now let's choose a point somewhere in between these two. How about right here? And now I'm going to connect that point. Oh, and I should label this. So this is going to be um, point P, Q, uh, and right here I'm going to put L. So I have angle LPQ or QLP, and this is going to be M out here. So I'm going to connect that to my vertex. And now I want to measure each one of these using my protractor again. So my little one, the little one for me is on the bottom. And since this is 90 degrees, this line should line up with the 90. 
if I did it right. So this line looks like it's going right through 10, 24. So this is 24 degrees. Now I kind of have to turn it to do my second angle. And it looks to be 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 4 degrees. Now, could it be 64 degrees? What's 64 and 24? That's 88 degrees. So either my protractor was wrong or I didn't construct it very well to begin with. Now, there is going to be some human error in here. And on the assignments, if you're like one degree off, I'm not unhappy about that. But still in your drawing, maybe you go ahead and say, all right, well, maybe I was one degree off of 25 and 65. Or I'd even be okay with you leaving this one as 24 and making this one 66, or making this one 64 and this one 26. Again, as long as you're within a degree, then you're okay. Now, there is a name for two angles that have a sum of 90 degrees. Do you know what it is? Complementary angles. And so it's easy for students to get supplementary angles and complementary angles confused. Um, and these would be adjacent complementary angles, but there's not a special name for it like up here with linear pair. Down here it's just they are complementary and adjacent. And complementary angles don't have to be adjacent, but it is again only two angles. Um, the way that, uh, a fun way to memorize this one is that in 180 degrees, there is an S. And in 90 degrees, you can see the C, right there for complementary. So S for supplementary, C for complementary. The other way I think about it is that C comes first in the alphabet before S, and on the number line, 90 comes before 180. So alphabetical and numerical. Whatever you need to do to memorize it, but students will get these uh, confused all the time. The difference between supplementary and complementary. They'll go, oh, I know one of them adds up to 180, one of them adds up to 90. Um, I can't remember which one is which. Well, you got to come up with a memory trick. And I've had students come up with some really cool, fun tricks to remember them. This is one of them. Um, and then the number order and the alphabetical thing. And that one's pretty common, too. So now I want you to draw two angles and one of them, two complementary angles, one is 45 degrees. And this one would be not adjacent. Because, just because we've already drawn one that is adjacent. So you can pause the video and try it on your own or you can do it with me. So I'm going to draw one that's facing that way and one that's facing that way. So I'm going to go ahead and do my 45 one first. Some of you may already know that they are both going to be 45, aren't they? So 45 is right there. I'm going to label that 45 degrees, and then since 90 minus 45 equals 45, I know this other one has to be 45 as well. So line that up just right, 10, 20, 30, 45 is right there in the middle of my words, that's okay. to draw it clear out there. I had it there to line it up and then there you go. So I didn't have to draw over my words. 45 degrees. So you need to be able to use a protractor and a straight edge to draw complementary and supplementary angles and sometimes they will be adjacent and sometimes they will not be adjacent. 